for another special guest. Uh, this one, I'm going to get you your own walk-up music at some point, because okay. you were in here all of the time. Okay. Can I make, <laughs> can I make requests on my walk-up music? Sure. I have a suggestions. Sure. They are maybe relevant. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Johnson from the Fulton County Community Foundation and the Northern Indiana Community Foundation. And yes. They're kind of one, one in the, the same. same. So. One in the same. So. Yeah, we it's a busy time of year it right is, now. It so is. I have a lot of things going on. Um, so I think today is kind of what I would deem a variety show. We're going to talk a little bit about some events, some end of year things, some grants, okay. all of the above. All right. So um, a couple things that we were able to do this last um, month, um, had a couple events at the Times Theater. Yes. Um, it was really exciting to be able to use that space and course that's been a project that's been in the works a long time and to be able to have events there and show movies and um, have community groups gather there it's pretty awesome to see everybody walks in and says I haven't been in here for a while this is really cool yes you know, it's not just a movie theater there's artwork all over when you walk yes, in. yes there is they have popcorn I've had the popcorn popcorn is great you know I think by like have popcorn okay the well I could be wrong it's also very economical yes they do a great job and a lot of um, the movies and events they've been having there have been um, sponsored by various community organizations help keeping the cost down for families and yes um, so of course we're in October so you're thinking about Halloween and some of those great Halloween movies yeah going on so a little plug there for the theater as well <laughs> but um, we had a couple of events we'll talk about women's giving circle we had a guest last month um, Jenny Smith I'm um, representing that organization talking about that group and we'll talk a little bit about their grants but another thing that we did there recently was a food pantry summit okay. um, we had that there on October 12th and um, one of the things that we did during that summit was show a video titled The Working Hungry. And it was kind of a neat video that was produced, followed three families, one from the Indianapolis area, one from a more rural part of the state, one from the Plymouth area, um, talking about who's using food pantries. Mm -hmm. I had an opportunity to talk with a couple food pantries a few months ago and asked them, who are you seeing use food pantries? And they said, you know, we're seeing a lot of increase in people that are using food pantries for the first time because nobody would be surprised, but groceries are more expensive now. Yeah. It's just, it's difficult for a lot of families to make ends meet. And a lot of times these food pantries are seeing people for the first time, maybe a couple of adults in the family, both working. Mm -hmm. The comment was made, sometimes they're working two jobs. Um, sometimes it's grandparents supporting families. Um, mm -hmm not only their children but grandchildren or in some cases great-grandchildren yeah um, so these food pantries are doing an awesome job um, helping families either meet food needs or fill a food gap that they may not be able to afford so um, great job to the food pantries we've got some pretty awesome ones here in our community we do um, that are doing a great job and um, we had over 50 attendees at that event and um, some good collaboration happened during that. So, a couple of things coming up. It's October, so it's almost the end of year. Yeah, um, yeah. This is a time where we get a lot of questions or people are thinking about end of year in relation to tax planning. Mm -hmm. um, think about, I use the term voluntary versus involuntary giving. Um, involuntary giving is you're required so <laughs> you have to pay taxes yes you can't say no I'm declining to pay my taxes this year I mean you could you could but that may not end well for you <laughs> yeah though. yeah um, so you think about that that's what I look at as involuntary giving you're going to have to do that one way or the other and yes. a lot of those do go to support needs you think about the things that we have um, in our community, we have roads. I appreciate mm -hmm. having good roads and things like that. But um, some of that involve, uh, some of that voluntary giving. Um, you think about charitable giving and how often that can reduce a tax burden. Yeah. And here's the time where I put in the disclaimer: I'm not a tax professional, so please mm -hmm. talk with your financial planner, your accountant, your tax advisor about specific situations dealing with with your finances. But there's a lot of times where giving can help reduce that tax burden. 
So you can shift that involuntary to some voluntary and support something that you may be passionate about locally. So um, it's great to see folks taking advantage of that and now is the time to be thinking about that. Um, have an opportunity, we'll talk a little bit about Giving Tuesday here in a minute, but I bet you can't guess what day Giving Tuesday is on. Um, the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. Yeah, I feel like you knew that answer. I might have. I, I think <laughs> this goes in your hat with all the trivia questions that you get, but yeah. All right. um, that's, that's something that we'll talk about here in a little bit, some details, but um, another tool that people have used a lot um, recently is is an IRA charitable rollover. Um, and what this is, is it's a tool for folks once you reach a certain age, um, some folks it's 70 and a half, some folks it's 72, depends on your age. There have been some recent law changes that affected that. But at some point, if you have a traditional IRA, you have to take what's called a required minimum distribution. Okay. Whether you need that income or not, you take it. Um, sometimes it can affect taxes, sometimes it can affect the tax bracket that you may be in. So um, there has been federal law that passed um, the last few years that allow individuals to say, you know what, I don't need this, so what I want to do is give this directly to a charity. It's a really simple process. An individual can say, you know what, I want to support this charity, I want to send money directly to them. They work with the custodian of the account, whether that be a bank, whether that be a financial investment firm, and they'll direct that custodian to send those monies to the community foundation or a qualified charity, um, and then that fulfills that required minimum distribution. Okay. They don't have to claim it as income, um, so that's where a lot of times the tax savings, and if somebody is already planning to give or or maybe has extra capacity to give, that's a great tool that a lot of people have taken advantage of. One qualification, um, an individual can only give up to $100,000 a year um, okay. in this process, but it's a great tool for somebody that says, hey, I have this, I don't need the income, the income may affect me negatively, or I'm already planning to give it, so let's do it out of an IRA. It's been a very, very popular thing um, the last few years for donors to be able to um, support causes that they're passionate about through the community foundation or other organizations that qualify for this and and fulfill some of those legal requirements for that IRA so I encourage folks of course we always you can come in and write out a check to the community foundation but mm -hmm. a lot of times that's not the most beneficial way if you have appreciated asset we think about stocks a lot of people are are looking at that at this time of year of course the stock market it could be good, it could be bad today. Right. It's been an interesting time, but yes. um, there are folks that do have appreciated assets like that. Um, and a lot of times it's more beneficial for the donor to reduce a tax burden as well as make that gift that they're passionate about and support causes. So um, I always encourage folks, think about that. Think about what you'd like to see supported and, and how that can happen. So end of year, it'll be here before we know. Yes, it will. <laughs> yes, it will. So, so I mentioned Giving Tuesday. Yes, you as did. you correctly answered, it is the first Tuesday after Thanksgiving. Yay! This year it happens to be November twenty eighth. Okay. So mark that on your calendars. I think WROI will be there. Um, we'll have some to be. exciting things going on. We'll be announcing a philanthropy award winner mm -hmm. again, as we have in the past. Have some interviews. Um, we do have some matches offered. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to mention two specifically. Um, again, thank you to Rex and Chris and Matt out at Rapid View. Um, they are offering a couple of matches for some local organizations, the Fulton County Parks and Recreation Department. Okay. Um, they have $10,000 that's available to be matched for that endowment fund. And also the Outlet Youth Center. Um, they're providing $15,000 for matching for that organization and then more details will be coming when we can say this but mm -hmm. I feel comfortable in saying if you're interested in giving to community funds we have a pretty significant match that's going to be happening like I said okay. stay tuned for further details yes did I get the broadcast language correct on that <laughs> yes <laughs> yes you did but um, if folks are interested in a, in a match for community funds of course we've 
talked a lot about what community funds have done, and we'll talk a little bit about some of those grants here in a second. Um, but that match is has actually started, so folks are interested, thinking about end of year planning and thinking, you know, I'm not quite sure what I want to support. Well, sometimes community funds are those ones that um, donors can say, here are funds, use them as needed. Okay. And so it's a really great tool for us to be able to respond to some needs that come up on a regular basis or um, maybe something that somebody gave a gift 10 years ago and says, use this for current community needs. And so this is a way for donors to be able to respond to that. So again, mark on the calendar, um, November 28th, we'll start, we'll kick off about 11 o'clock that morning. Okay. And go till 5.30, lunch will be provided. That's have lunch, part. it's always a good time. <laughs> um, come hear a little bit about some of the things that the foundation has done throughout the year. You get bits and pieces on the radio each month. Yep. Um, but we'll have have information about some of the things that um, donors have helped us do throughout the year and then also uh, have lunch if you're interested in making an end of year donation it'd be the perfect time to do that um, we'll it's it's a little bit early to think about Christmas yeah. but if you're looking for a gift for somebody that has everything and doesn't want anything maybe a gift in their honor Okay. That's always a, a thing that folks like to do as well. So, yeah. so it is Halloween, but I feel like I have to preface anything I say that may be leading up to Christmas there. So, it's close. We're, we're, looking forward, <laughs> we're looking forward to Giving Tuesday. Um, thank you to all the donors who have made these grants possible, and, and we're looking forward to what the future brings and those opportunities, and of course that match for community funds as well would be great. Yeah. And, Again, appreciation to Rapid View um, for their continued support of some pretty instrumental organizations in our community. Absolutely. So talking about community funds. Yes. Some grants that we've made from community funds recently. Um, I just have a list of a handful here that we'll talk about, but Hoosiers Feeding the Hungry. Mm -hmm. Don't know if you've ever heard of that organization. I have. I well, have. Well, good. Well, apparently the word's getting out a little bit. A really neat organization that works with farmers, and of course this time of year you think about hunters. Yeah. Um, what they do is they work with local meat processors and help provide processing fees. So say a farmer or a hunter has an animal that either they harvested or are looking at donating to a food pantry that individual can go to one of these approved processors and check out Hoosiers Feeding the Hungry on the, their website. Um, they have a list of local processors that um, will, you can take an animal, drop it off, say, I want this to go to the XYZ food pantry. Okay. And Hoosiers Feeding the Hungry takes care of the processing fees for that. So um, they can take care of that. They will get that to the local food pantry. Um, we've been very fortunate in the fact that all of our area food pantries have received support from Hoosiers Feeding the Hungry as far as meat donations, whether it be um, some specific donors giving to a specific pantry or just to pantries in the area. Yeah. Um, they're a great resource for that. And of course, um, if you looked at the grocery store, we mentioned the cost of groceries. Yeah. It's not cheap to buy proteins like ground beef. No, or no, pork. Um, and so this organization is really doing a great job. Um, we had some great um, had some great support for um, from this organization during COVID and really did an amazing job of helping us provide for some really short term needs yeah. that were emergency situations. So um, Hoosiers Feeding the Hungry put in a little plug for them. We provided two thousand dollars to help with some processing fees. Um, some local fire departments. Mm -hmm. We had been fortunate. We've got a great group of local firefighters, volunteers, do an amazing job in our community. Um, one of the things that we've been able to purchase this year, help purchase another one of the automatic CPR devices or Lucas devices, yes. um, so that fire departments can actually have these on the trucks. Um, you think about Fulton County, it's not that big of a place. No, it's not. But if I leave my house, it takes me close to a half an hour to get over to Akron. Yeah. So you think about the time that response. So having these actually out in the field 
and deployed. Um, we'll have these obviously in Rochester. Um, in the past, we were able to help purchase one to have on local ambulances, which that's one that will be here, will stay here, depending regardless of who's providing ambulance services. Okay. Um, but our fire departments have those. A lot of them have those on their trucks in that area. So a lot of times that first responder is the first one to show up. Yeah. So if you can deploy something like this immediately, it's it's really a life-saving tool. So um, we are able to purchase another one of those this year. Um, total cost for one of those devices is a little under $18,000 by the time it's outfitted and placed on the truck. So. Um, we appreciate our local fire departments. Yes, indeed. Think about how many people will volunteer to run into an emergency situation to potentially save your life. Yeah. That's a pretty awesome group of folks. Yes, it is. Another grant, we mentioned the Times Theater. Mm -hmm. Put in another plug for them. Um, they have a little space next to the theater, the Char Bell Studio. Yes, they do. Don't know if you've been in there yet. Kind of I, have not, space. I have seen uh, um, through the window. Though. They just they just completed that and um, have it available now. Um, I checked with them this morning. They said it's okay if I put in a plug. If you have a small community group, I think 20, 25 people is about the capacity for it. But okay. um, smaller events that may not require the space or accommodations of a theater. Um, they do have some meeting space available there, so check them out on Facebook. I know their website is under renovation right now, so you'll get this nice little message that says, we're working on this, <laughs> but they do have information on Facebook, contact information, so um, we are able to provide $4,000 for that to help them renovate that space and turn it into a gathering space. I know some local clubs, um, I think gaming groups. Yeah. Musicians, poetry, all those, all those cultural things. Artists. I've heard some rumors about maybe some art happenings there. So Ooh. keep your eyes out for art happening in the Charbel space, but a, a nice space. Um, another organization, Fulton County Animal Center. Mm -hmm. We were able to provide a grant of three thousand dollars, and they're calling a program called the Large Mix Fix. Okay. So this is a program that they're actually helping provide low-cost spay and neuter programs for larger breed dogs. All right. Um, you know, one of the things, we have an awesome animal center. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put in a little personal plug for them. <laughs> We've had the opportunity in the last month to adopt a dog from the animal center. So um, if you want to see a picture of our new family member, check out the Northern Indiana Community Foundation on Facebook. Okay. Kind of a cute puppy picture. All right. um, but this is actually the second animal that we currently have living in our house that has come from the animal center. So we have two dogs we've been able to adopt from them, but they do a great job of getting animals fixed and helping, uh, of course, all the animals that come from the shelter, if you adopt them, that's taken care of. But what if you're an individual that has an animal that you say, you know what, I want to, I want to be responsible, I want to help um, make sure that we don't have unwanted puppies or kittens. Um, so this, this large mix fix program, um, we provided $3,000 for um, the animal center and I know this program is filling up quickly. Okay. So if you're listening and you have an animal that you're a, a large breed dog that you're interested in having fixed through this program, get a hold of the animal center right away because I almost think one of their dates is already filled up or getting close. So. Oh yeah, they fill up quick. So that's just kind of a snapshot of some recent grants from community funds. The other thing that I wanted to talk about was the Women's Giving Circle, um, the grants that were okay. provided through this organization. Since, since 2011, this group has provided almost $90,000 in grants to local needs and causes. So wow. um, this year they had five recipients that um, received funding. Um, again, I'm going to mention the Fulton County Animal Center. This time it was for a, a cat trap neuter return program. Ah. Um, kind of addressing the overpopulation of cats in our community. They go out yeah. and they will actually trap community cats and have them fixed and then return back to the communities. And oh, okay. that really prevents new animals. If you trap them and, and move them to a different location, then another animal moves into that space. And if they're not fixed, then of course, kittens and cats produce like yes. crazy. <laughs> yes, they do. So a great program. So that group received $1,000 from the Women's Giving Circle. 
Um, another group receiving $1,000 was Liberty Township Park um, in Fulton. They've got a really great park down there. Um, their restroom facilities were needing some renovation. So this grant of $1,000 is going to help them do some renovations, some repairs in the restrooms, um, so that that service is available for folks enjoying, whether it be youth athletics, the great park that they have down there, um, areas right by the community center. Um, it, it's a really neat area to enjoy and appreciate um, the Lions Club taking yeah. care of this park for the community and so um, look for those renovations coming soon. Okay. Another exciting one. I think it was exciting because I <laughs> like technology, but did you know that robots have brains? Yes. Okay. So the Caston Robotics Program received $2,000 to purchase what they call brains. It's Think of it as a controller for their robotics. Um, they've got a really awesome program going on in Caston with uh, multiple grade levels, um, some competitions throughout the state. Um, I have even been to a world competition each of the mm -hmm. last few years as a group. Um, but this grant will help them purchase updated controllers for their robots. That really okay. is the heart of the entire process. Yes. Um, you think about the technology involved and there's arms and legs and wheels <laughs> and yeah. rotors and all these things, but this one piece controls this whole thing. So okay. it's really neat to see that. Um, a new program that's coming to Fulton County, have you heard of Dolly Parton's Imagination Library? I have. I'm okay. on the library. So we I are excited. Thank you to the library. Thank you to the Ladybug Foundation, to um, all the folks involved in this. Um, we are able to provide $2,500 for the Imagination Library to start up. So this is a program that provides books for children ages 0 to 5 in our community. The neat thing about it is once you sign up, that book shows up in the mail yes. on a regular basis. So um, some of these high quality services um, and high quality reading materials that right. families may not have the access to or may not be able to afford. Um, so we're very excited about that program we started. It's been talked about for a long time and finally had the folks come together that said, let's do this. All right. Um, and then the last grantee was $3,500 to the Recovery Cafe. The Recovery Cafe has been doing a great job of providing services um, to folks that, that need all kinds of different services, of course, you think about things like addiction um, of different forms. We say addictions and clarify the fact that's not just substance use. Right. Um, that is any kind of addiction, and, and that's a, I think that's a bigger scope than most people realize. Um, but one thing that they've been working to do is provide some mental health services. Okay. Um, so this will allow them, they've, they've been working with a, a licensed provider um, to provide some services to their clients and this will allow more and quicker access. Um, that's a really huge thing in our, in rural communities is the speed of access. Sometimes it takes a while to be able to get into um, a mental health services provider. Yes. And so this is something that um, they're really working on and, and a great program to offer additional services for clients um, at the Recovery Cafe. So total, the group this year, the Women's Giving Circle, gave out $10,000 in grants. So really an amazing organization. Um, if, if you are a member of that organization, thank you for being a part of it. If you're not a member and you're interested in joining that, check us out. We've, we've got information on the, on the um, Community Foundation's website, NICF.org, um, our foundation Facebook page, there is a specific Women's Giving Circle Facebook page, so okay. if you're interested in joining that, please join that as well. And um, It's a really great group that comes together and makes some grants and makes an impact in our community. So um, just kind of as we wrap up here, some reminders into your giving. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to think about that. Giving Tuesday, November 28th. Mark that on your calendar. Yes. We're looking forward to that. Um, and um, real quick, I, I don't know if you know yet. Do you know who's providing the lunch? It's one there may be some ideas. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll have that next month when I'm here. Well, I hope so. We'll make you hungry by okay. then. Right. So think about that. Um, and then the matches that we have offered, um, the Outlet Youth Center, um, Fulton County Parks and Recreation, and then also... 
um, our exciting opportunity that I can't give all the details on, but you can call me and find out all those details about community funds okay. um, matched um, that help us make grants like we talked about today. So all those things will be happening um, on November 28th. So get that on your calendar. Come join us. Have a good time. Have some food. Make a donation. Yes. Make an impact in Fulton County. Yes. Celebrate the impact that we've made in Fulton County. So we're looking forward to that. So if you have questions about anything we talked about today, again, you can always find us on our website, nicf.org. Um, we do have a Facebook page, Northern Indiana Community Foundation. Give us a call, 574-224-3223, or stop by our office at 227 East Knight Street to talk about any ideas or possibilities you have for making Fulton County an even better place than it already is. All right. All right, Brian, thank you so much for uh, everything that you do at the Community Foundation. Thank you to the Community Foundation for all they do as well. And uh, we'll talk to you again soon. We're looking forward to it. All right, thank you. You're listening to 92.5 The Fan.